General Colin Powell, welcome back to Meet the Press. As we indicated in that opening, there is a lot of anticipation and speculation about your take on this presidential campaign. We'll get to that in a moment. But in your old business, we might call this a tour of the horizon. Whoever is elected president of the United States, that first day in the Oval Office on January 21st, will face this. An American economy that's in a near uh, paralytic state at this time. We're at war in two different countries, Afghanistan and Iraq. We have an energy crisis. We have big decisions to make about health care and about global climate change. The President of the United States and the Congress of the United States now have the highest disapproval ratings that we have seen in many years. In all your years in public service, have you ever seen an incoming president face such daunting challenges? Uh, No. I have seen more difficult times in uh, our history. Uh, When I think about the early 70s when we were going through the Watergate, Spiro Agnew, Nixon period, that was not a good time. But right now, we're also facing a very daunting period. And I think the number one issue the president's going to have to deal with is the economy. That's what the American people are worried about. And frankly, it's not just an American problem, it's an international problem. We can see how all of these economies are now linked in this globalized system. And I think that'll be number one. Uh, The president will also have to make decisions quickly as to how to deal with Iraq and Afghanistan. And uh, also, I think the president has to reach out to the world and show that there is a new president, a new administration that is looking forward to working with our friends and allies. And in my judgment, also willing to talk to people who we have not been willing to talk to before, because this is a time for outreach. Given the state of the American economy, can we continue our military commitments around the world at the level that they now exist? We can. Uh, I think we have to look as to whether they have to be at that level. But uh, we have the wealth. We have the wherewithal to do that. (coughs) Excuse me, Tom. We have the ability to do that. And so first and foremost, we have to review those commitments, see what they are, see what else is needed, and make sure we give our troops what they need to get the job done as we have defined the job. We have that ability. If you were called into the Oval Office on January 21st by the new president, whoever it happens to be, and he said to you, General Powell, I need from you your recommendation on where I began. What should be my priorities? Where would you start? I would start with talking to the American people and talking to the world and conveying a new image of American leadership, a new image of America's role in the world. The problems will always be there, and there's going to be a crisis come along on the 21st or 22nd of January that we don't even know about right now. And so I think what the president has to do is to start using the power of the Oval Office and the power of his personality to convince the American people and to convince the world that America is solid, America is going to move forward, we are going to fix our economic problems, We're going to meet our overseas obligations. But restoring a sense of purpose, a sense of confidence in the American people and in the international community in America. What's not on the screen right now that concerns you that should be more prominent in the minds of the American people and the people running for president? I think the American people and the gentlemen running for president will have to early on focus on education more than we have seen in the campaign so far. America has a terrible educational problem in the sense that we have too many youngsters not finishing school. Uh, A third of our kids don't finish high school. 50% of our minorities don't finish high school. We've got to work on this, and uh, my my wife and I are leading a campaign for this uh, purpose. Also, I think the new president has to realize that the world looks to America for leadership. And so we have to show leadership on some issues that the world is expecting us to, whether it's energy, global warming, and the environment. And I think we have to do a lot more with respect to poverty alleviation and helping the needy people of the world. We need to increase the amount of resources we put into our development programs to help the rest of the world. Because when you help the poorest in the world, you start to move them up an economic and social ladder, and they're not going to be moving toward violence or terrorism of the kind that we worry about. 